Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Bob, this is Greybeard Models. And uh, just like to say hi to everybody. Hi to all the new subscribers. It's uh, really great to see everybody coming on board. It's great stuff. Um, if this is your first visit, and this is your first visit, and you're, the first video you're looking at, uh, and you like it, please like and subscribe. And uh, you know, hit the bell to get notifications when I do a new video. At the moment, I'm going to put this video out and then I'm going to take a break because on Monday, um, obviously it's the Queen's funeral and, um, you know, God bless her. She's been a brilliant figurehead for the country and I think she's absolutely sorely missed by all of us here in the UK and, you know, around the world. The, 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 the amount of um, respect that's been shown to her has been brilliant. Uh, so I'm just going to take a break for a few days and then I'll bring out another video um, Hopefully um, just looking at it now. I hope, hope to be towards the end of the of the gecko Katie ambulance But that's to come Let's get on with the video and thanks for watching uh, It's Bob from Greybeard Models um, Just like to do an introduction to, into the next part and, and I'm just going to go through um, dealing with some of the photo etch parts um, in the gecko kit. Um, now, don't get don't get me wrong. I'm no expert here. Um, I, you know, this this is just really going through the methods I use um, and that I'm comfortable with. And um, you know, some of you out there, and I know there's other model makers out there that are infinitely better than I am um, but I'm, I'm just trying to show you um, what how I do things like create these runners in the kit and other parts um, deal with other parts in the kit and, and how to how to use them um, I'll be using a lighter and you know sharp blades as we do so you know if you're not comfortable use, using that sort of equipment um you know if you're one of the you're new to the hobby or you're young or whatever um you know get some help or guidance from someone in in the family or whatever you know friend or whatever and just and just make sure you do this safely i don't want people to get hurt or or you know get burnt or whatever but um anyway this this is what i do and uh Hope, hope that it, that helps you. Um, right, I'll be back in a sec. Well, one of the first things that um, I wanted to go through was um, uh, the photo etch tools that I use. Now, let's go to the, f the first thing that I, I always use is this this scalpel. Um, this is a Swan Morton um, number three handle with I think that's a number number six blade um, I use a curved blade the reason I use the curved blade is so that if I'm trying to cut a part off of the fret I can actually see where the blade is before I apply the pressure if you use a blade like that which is my other preferred blade which is a number 11 obviously one you're putting a lot of effort into the point um, and you can't really see where you're going to go with it so I, I prefer this blade a lot of, I think a lot of people have various curved blades but I, I prefer that one um, the other thing that I do with this blade is I always sharpen it um, I use a whetstone I've got a whetstone here this is this is a small whetstone that I think I acquired from um, an Exacto set many, many moons ago, um, and it, it's just ideal for for sharpening um, small scalpel blades. If you, you can buy big sort of engineers whetstones, which I've got in my workshop, but it, this this is ideal for just having on here, just so that I can give it a few wipes on, on the blade and make sure that it's it's well sharp 
the other thing that I use is, is this this is this is a sheet of actually I wrote it on here it's a polypropylene uh, I've got it from a company called Formation Plastics uh, here in the UK um, but I find this really useful to cut the um, photo etch sprues off um, mainly because it's hard enough to resist the blade and therefore you can cut it and also it's soft enough so that you know if you if you cut a, a blade like this onto a metal surface you'll you'll dull the blade so this this is quite good because it's i think it's it's the sort of stuff you get on cutting boards and kitchens and stuff um but i use that as well um the next thing that i use is i've got these um these little photo etch um infinity uh, photo etch uh sanding sticks if you like um use a double-sided um sanding material there that comes from infinity as well and i'll just stick a, a, a strip of it on there um and i use the different sizes i've got a whole set there um but i use the different sizes this is really good for tidying up the nubs on, on the pieces that you cut off so the first first thing I think the best thing to do is to actually go from here we'll get get one of these pieces off uh, and we'll go through the go through the motions of uh, cutting it so I know the first part that I need to get off is going to be part number 36 or one of the number 36's This has still got the backing protective strip plastic on the on the reverse. In actual fact, this photo etch material from from Gecko is quite good. We can lift that all off. And it should come away from the plastic. Come on, you will. Because you do normally when, when the camera's not running. Don't you? Yes, Bob. Right. There we go. So we've got that piece off, and obviously that's stayed on the reverse. That's okay. Right. Clear that. So uh, with this, these particular parts, these are these are the runners here that um, hold the the stretchers. They're, they're when they when they're loading the, the stretchers onto the ambulance, they slide along these runners. So these are the these ones up here that fit into the <coughs> the central or, or the bottom part of the of the um, ambulance body. Um, I don't know if the camera is picking that up, but actually there's there's a fold line right along the length there of of that piece. So you've got to form a channel, and that's really quite difficult you could, to do this by hand you, you it's very it's virtually impossible to do um, but we do have a folding tool uh, there's a lot of manufacturers of these around um, some of them are very very expensive um, I don't know where I got this one oh yes I do because it's on the back um, it's a hold and fold from the small shop made in the US of A and I've got this, I think, over here in the UK from, now who was it? Can't remember. Can't remember who I got it from. I had it so long. So the trick with this is, is to make sure that this part, first of all, is clear of any nubs. So we go along it and 
one of the reasons I use this is because I can see what I'm doing there's a very small nub on the end of there now we might just be able to do this in the hand which is good and what I would say is, is this I use use these um, don't put any pressure on we're just rubbing the rubbing the surface using the weight of the sanding just to take the nub off you're not you're not trying to gouge huge amounts of material away you're just trying to take a very very small amount of brass edge off the end run the finger along yep that's clear as you can see this sort of fingerprints are get acquired on it and uh, that's okay because we're going to clean it all off later uh, there's a nub there so the same principle applies just gently rub this on there Just taking that off There's one there it's very useful for when, when you're cutting off these parts to actually just make a sort of mental note of where these nubs tend to be. I'll we'll actually run a finger along there. Be careful, because don't rub it too hard, because if there is something there, you, <laughs> chances are you might cut yourself. Um, and then there's, there were two nubs right at the end there, and we can go across the end that way, uh, and we just gently take those nubs off. We're not applying any pressure you know it's 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 just two fingers just holding it and just rubbing that along there just enough to guide it along and that will take that edge off okay Get a wipe through um, one of the things I'll do with this is you can clean this with um, Tamiar extra thin <coughs> right so let's put the folder in place now these are always tricky when you is, is when you're doing a channel which which way to do it so I always find that we'll lift that up get it generally in position now I've got this big folding blade here um, and this is quite useful especially with a long piece like that because that will fit into the slot created for you to make the fold so use that to push it right up into place tighten it down and you'll see that it's actually quite even along there now this one because it's got um, a sort of double edge on it it's sometimes tricky to um, <coughs> lift the end of the, the photo edge up so I use a, a I suppose what we call a safety razor just to start the lifting process gradually running the blade along it and you're gradually creating a lift on that edge just to get the part in place and then we take this one and we can get this right in underneath then and we start easing it up into the vertical position yeah, and as you can see from there it looks like it's disappeared so now we can ease that back out just check it to see that it's straight uh, it's relatively straight so bring this out a touch Now what 
we're looking for is the other edge and there's the other edge there so we put the blade in the edge as we did before and we can tighten it back down again <coughs> excuse me so before I fold this I thought I'd just show you um, the contour of the front of this lip is quite quite low because of that curve and that means that we can now fold that over itself so we do the same as we did before run this safety razor underneath and that will start the lift and then we bring that one up and over to a vertical position like that these are tall off now got the channel created there you go there it is that side's a little bit out but we can adjust that that's fine and then that can be fitted into position um, onto the floor which I thought I had on the bench next to me which of course I don't so there that that now fits into place on there he says trying to balance it all in place but that fits in there and that's your first runner for stretches okay moving on be back in a minute these parts now um, I want to deal with those and these parts that are arched um, so the first thing to do is do these 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 channels here and the difference between those and the other ones are these ones haven't got a, a sort of fold line so the because these ones actually go the other way um, so you have no indication on the side that you're going to put under the hold and fold um, where you're going to fold it but also because it's going the other way it's a little bit tougher to do so with these um, I think the best thing to do first of all is to anneal them so I'll do that and then I'll come back to you so by annealing the um, brass strip and it's, it's a fairly simple um, method um, I use a, a big lighter um, and then just apply gentle heat underneath the metal part um, hold it in tweezers um, until it slightly discolors um, once it starts to discolor then you're changing the sort of structure of the brass um, and it becomes softer and it's a lot easier to fold um, one of the other things is, is also because the this particular uh, part is actually gonna fold I don't know if the it's try to try to explain how this goes the the part is going to fold that way so it has the would have inverted you as we look at it here but then when you use the part you're using it that way up so what I do is I need to transfer some sort of marking on this side so that you know where to where to fold and what I do is um, done it with this end 
um, is just just place it down on the on my bit of block here and then where where I'm going to fold is going to be about there so I'll just put a, a mark there with with the scalpel blade and just apply some gentle pressure not huge amounts because we just softened it but just put some pressure there so that on the on the reverse side you've now got a couple of marks uh, indentations let's see if they'll pick that up um, you've got a couple of indentations there and they're sufficient so that when you put it in the holding fold you can see how it's all going to line up um, so I'm going to do that and the reason I'm going to do that because I know if I try and do this with the holding fold in camera it's probably going to all go horribly horribly wrong or it's going to be a pain in the ass but there you go um, so I'm going to go off and do that and then I'll show you the results in the end so we've now, we've now folded this one um, <laughs> again like I say that, that, that went absolutely fine and I'm sure if I did it on camera it all go horribly wrong so the next that that's how those are folded um, the other part that of the of these part of these sort of runners is this part here uh, and as you can see um, he's just putting it down as you can see there's there's a sort of a round top to this this part and on this particular piece of photo etch on one side don't know if it will pick that up I'll put it back on the onto the board yeah that might be easier um, you can see there's two marks there um, and, a, and that part there that section there is actually slimmer thinner than than the other than the, the ends so that's the point where you need to do that roll um, as per the diagram now the way to do that I'll take one of these so we need to roll it so that it sits either side of this part at one end and to do that you need to roll it or you need to roll this part get back into shot you need to roll that part over a former to get the right shape so it just so happens I have these um, this bag of dowels and, and rods um, and this is um, again from the small shop and this is called a, the PE part rolling set um, and it has all, all of these instructions here how, how to how to do certain things uh, to do curves and cylinders with your photo it's is quite um, this isn't a cheap set um, but it's it's worth having if if you don't get that um, you just need to sort of hunt around um, in amongst um, your tools or I don't know um, I think I think the roll size we're looking for is probably this one let's have a look that seems about right maybe a little bit over um, let's have a look at this one what's that one look like that one looks actually okay so if you haven't got this set um, what you need to do is find something that's similar um, I've got a piece of wire here um, which actually it sort of looks like it's the right size um, and this wire is actually a length of length of coat hanger wire so if you're one of those wire coat hangers in your in your wardrobe or wherever you you know store your clothes um, either take one cut it up whatever um, but what I I actually did that because it's quite handy to have a piece of wire like this but um, yeah cut cut the wire off and use that um, and, it, and I'll show you how, how we do that because we, we've got to try and roll this part evenly around the get into shot we've got to roll that evenly around that 
um, and to do that it sounds exactly as it is but before we do that we'll anneal it so if I get my tweezers just want to get hold of it there and a little bit of heat underneath it just to see the temperature just changes uh, or the colour of the brass just changes right and that's enough to have annealed it um, what you will have on the reverse is a load of smoke or coke um, clean that off and then we'll roll it all right I'll come back in a second okay so the next part is to look at folding this around the rod um, first of all you need to make sure you've got it the right way around um, so you've got the two marks oh, go into camera right so you've got the two two marks there and there and they're your, your points of reference really and I need to sort of pick this up and put this on the rod and and, and the question is of course how, how, how do you fold it the this straight part is really your, your reference point so if you put that onto the onto your former um, and then just hold that in place so that it's you know it's running parallel to the center line of the former and then just hold that in place there and bring the other side around and you'll find because it's been annealed it, it, it'll actually it will run round um, as you can see there it's gone out of, of shape a little but again because it's because it's soft you can actually coax that down gently and it and it will then go into shape and it will form a part over over that rod and you can see it just like that hopefully the camera will pick that up um, and it doesn't matter that it's closed it's just formed the shape so you can just gently ease that out like that and then you, you then have the part in the shape that you want and then what you can then do and do it with the tweezers if I'm picking up it's very hard to do on camera actually it's, it's surprisingly difficult um, you know hats off to people out there who do YouTube videos and show you how to do this stuff on camera um, it's, it's blinking tricky it really is so the next next thing to do will be to then fold that part over um, into position and then glue it into place and it should be and is is the same thickness as that as that anyway I'll come back to you in a sec right so that that's how I've gone through some of the parts um, in the gecko kit which are photo etch um, I hope you found that useful um, if you did great I'm, I'm glad to have helped leave your comments in below and uh, see you in the next video thanks for watching bye for now